And, and as always, giving honor first and foremost to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are the apostolic church of the Lord Jesus Christ. A whole true gospel church based upon the apostolic doctrine baptizing only in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Acts, the second chapter, in the 38th verse. We do want to welcome you to this edition of Questions and Answers with the Apostle. If it is the Lord's will, we shall be talking about a very important subject, training up a child, my Lord. Nevertheless, we have to deal with this because if you have children, whether they're grown or whether or not they are small, we all, Lord God, know that our children hold a special place in our hearts. So we must look and gleam through the word of God to see what our responsibility are to them as far as God is concerned. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. The Bible says the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are still not safe. Many parents who profess that they know God, many parents live it every day, send their children off to school. In school, there's killing. There's people being robbed. There's drugs. There's rape. People are being bullied and sexual perversion is on, on our price. But yet and still, we do not, Lord God, want to follow what the word of God. No wonder the Bible say there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is destruction. You can pamper your children all you want. You can give them the best that this world has to offer. But you cannot be with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We must understand that the enemy, the devil, is busy. If we look through the word of God, he got the first man, my Lord. He got the strongest man, and he also got the wisest man. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care who you are, what you think. I don't care what kind of money you think you have or your Lord God's social status. If your child have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, he got them. It's just only a matter of time before this thing is going to be revealed. God Almighty left us a plan of salvation. We, Lord God, our parents have a responsibility to our children. But yet still we think in our feeble mind that we know more than God. Even though it's God Almighty who have created us and blew into our nostrils the breath of life. God Almighty left certain rules and bylaws that we, Lord God, as parents should and must follow in order for us, the Lord God, to walk through the day being just comfortable knowing that our babies are out there. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, in the first verse, is a children, my Lord. He say, obey your parents in the Lord. He say, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother that your days upon earth may be long. Children are dying at such a young age because we as parents are not willing to follow what the word of God has subscribed for us. And instead of we being parents and enforcing what God requires, 
We want to be their friend. We want them to like us. We want them, Lord God, to have a relationship with us. But God Almighty tell us to train them up in the way that they will go. And the Bible say when they are old, they will not depart. Every day, you take your children, Lord God, to folks who are not saved. You're taking your babies to people who don't even know who God is. And Lord God, we plan Russian roulette every time we allow our children to go out of our sight. But we won't do what God Almighty have required. We are not wanting to be obedient. We want to follow the status quo because so-and-so is doing it this way. We want our children to play football, basketball, and all these sports. And be in all these different auxiliaries in school. But my question to you today is, is your child saved? And let me say that one more time because you may not have it. You might not hurt me. I say you allow your children to do everything that's of this world. Even though the Bible said in 1 John, the second chapter in the 15 verse, he said, love not this world. Bible say neither the things that are in this world for he that loveth the world. The Bible say the love of the God is not in you. God even letting us know, he said, that all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh. The eyes of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The Bible said, this world shall pass away. You letting your children play all these sports. Man running down a field fast as he can, crashing his body into another man. And you think that's all right. We see that, Lord God, and people clap. clap. People standing up, Lord God, and giving their approval to these things, Lord God. My Lord, but yet and still we say we're on our way, Lord God, to the kingdom of God. We have a responsibility. You better understand me and get a clear understanding. We have a responsibility to our children. And God going to hold you to that. Many parents, Lord God, I'm not talking about you because you have chance now if you have breath in your body. Many parents going to die. And they're going to close their eyes and they're going to meet their children in the pit of hell. You can let the people fool you. You can let the churches fool you. Talking about your child is in heaven. Talking about they're in a better place. Ah, Lord God, you have no idea that God is not going to change his word. You have no idea that God has a place for everyone and everything that is against his will of God. But God Almighty have given us a plan of salvation. We being parents, we Lord God, who God has entrusted these Lord God young men and young women to our trust. We have a responsibility, our children. It's time out with all that foolishness. It's time out to quit trying to be their friend. It's time out, Lord God, to allow your children to hang around folks who drink smoke. Lord God, and committing all these, uh, all these sexual perversive acts that many of you already know. Because many of your parents give their own children alcohol and, and all these various different things and, and cigarettes to smoke. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. No wonder the Bible said a wicked tree bring forth a wicked fruit. David said in sin was I born and he said in sin did my mother raise me. You see, if you are not saved and Lord God, your children is a product of your body. Then how in the world can they be saved? An apple tree only bring about an apple. Lord God, if you are not saved and don't know who Jesus is. Then your babies, your children, your little ones, Lord God, have no idea because they're looking to you for guidance. But God Almighty have given us something that if we are wanting to be obedient to the word of God, 
And we want to just cast off the pleasure of sin for a season. And quit worrying about our own self because if you look in that Bible in the book of Luke, the 16th chapter when the rich man died, all he wanted was the Lord God for Father Abraham to let him come back and warn his brothers and sisters not to come back to that place, not to come down to this place of torment. I told you once and I'm going to tell you again, many of you old parents, when you close your eyes, you're going to see your child in hell. Because you've done nothing at all to help them. God Almighty entrusted them to you. My question to you, what in the world have you done for them? Have you brought them to Christ? No, you don't want to do that. You want to put them in the movie show and let them see all that violence. You want to, Lord God, let them go out in the street, Lord God, and get murdered and killed. And this year, you want folks to feel sorry for you. God Almighty have given us the responsibility Bible say, train up your child in the way that we go. We have a responsibility to train our children. We have a responsibility to try not to be their friend, want to be their friend. Some of the women, Lord God, men go out with their go out with their daughters. My Lord, something wrong with you. You forgot, Lord God, you the mother. You forgot what well, I want them to be my friend. I'm not interested in no child being my friend. I'm the parent. God Almighty have entrusted their spirit and their soul to us until they leave the nest. Do you not understand that? That sometimes there are many, Lord God, people go to work or go out of town and they come back and their children are no longer in this world. Do you not understand that we must do something to protect our child, but we want the Lord God get rid of them, letting them go here, letting them go there so we can have time to ourselves. My Lord, my God, you wicked. That's not what God intended. That's not what God Almighty have left for us to do. Proverbs 13, chapter 24, verse, he say, he that spared his rod. Bible say you hate your son. I know there's laws. And the devil is slick. And the devil's job is the Lord God bring laws against the against in, in these books to cause us, Lord God, who are of God, to not to be able to ask, or say back in the old days when I was rose up to spank their child. And so they institute laws, and now you got these children who so high-minded. You got these children who so as the old folks say, manage. And that they'll take their cell phone and they'll call Lord God the law on you if you put their if you put your hands up on them. I understand that. I understand there's laws, but the problem with it is is you didn't get them in time. I can assure you, Lord God, when they're young, the Bible say the Bible says if you if you if you spite a rod, you Bible say you hate. Your child, let me read it for you again. I know you think your way is better than God's way. I know you think you know more than God, even though God created us. I'm going to read it for you one more time. Proverbs, the 13th chapter in the 24th verse. He said, he that spared his rod. I don't want to spank him. We want to put him in time out. You want to ground him. You want to take their telephone from him. You want the Lord God not allow him to watch TV. You want to not allow them to go outside or talk to their friends. That's not what God said. Proverbs 13, chapter in the 24th verse, he said, he that spared his rod. God say, Lord God, he hated his child. You hate them. You showing hate and discontent. You showing, Lord God, that you don't love God. You showing, Lord God, that you fear the world more than you fear God. I'm not advocating you go out there and beat your child. I'm not advocating that. What I'm advocating you is the word of God is right. I'm advocating that God can't not lie. I'm advocating if you do anything according to the divine scriptures, then you do it in, 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 mean, in, in a loving manner then you don't have anything to worry about. But yet and still, you're talking about time out and all this foolishness and children are being killed, children are being murdered, children bringing guns to school, children raping people, Lord God. And guess what? Your child is in that school. You don't have no inclination, no idea whether or not you're going to come home at the end of a work day and whether or not your child is going to be at home. 
He don't even know that much. But if we if we lean to Jesus and we look at what the Bible said in the book of Psalms, the hundred and third chapter in the first verse, he said, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And he said that all that's with him. He said, forget not all his benefits. See, when we come to God and we bring our children into God, oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I know you don't want to do that. You have no idea of trying to bring your child to God. You know, many of y'all done lost them too far. You done already went too far. There is never such thing called too far. Lord God, when there's God out there and there's Jesus out there, you can always bring them back. But the Bible says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And he said, and forget not all his benefits. Look at the God benefit package. When we, we, can, we can't be with our children 24 hours a day. We can't stop them from doing sin. But the spirit of God can do all, certainly do all of them. God can raise up a hedge of protection around them. God can close certain doors that they may want to get in and they can't get in. If we lean into God, if we do like David said, David said, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. He said, I will fear no evil because David said, for thou art me. There's a scripture in 1 John, the fourth chapter, in the fourth verse, he said, greater is he. That's in you than he is in the world. God will protect your child. We have the power of prayer. We have the power, Lord God, over all serpents and scorpions. We can cover our children, Lord God, but you can't cover nothing because you ain't covered yourself. Children is a product of you. You smoke, you drink in front of them. What you think they're going to do? Lord God, you curse and you fuss, you argue in front of them. What you think they're going to do? They learn, Lord God, from us. We have to, Lord God, find our own self. We must first be delivered from our own minds before we can help anybody else. We smoke and we do all these things in front of our children and our children see that they think it's okay. We're grown folks. They think that's grown up. They think it's all right. And then you want to, Lord God, get an attitude. When they, Lord God, follow the path that you set, when they follow in your example, when they see in, Lord God, this, that what you are doing, and they are assuming in their childish mind because you won't reprove them, they think it's okay. And then you wants to get upset with them. Proverbs 19 chapter in the 8th verse, he say, chasten thou son while there is hope. You can't help them when they're in jail. You can't do nothing with them in jail. You can't do nothing when they're out there robbing people. You can't do nothing for them, Lord God, when they're out there, Lord God, stealing. You can't do nothing out there when they're fighting folks. The Bible said, but he, but he said in Proverbs 19, he said, Chasten thou sons when there is hope and let not thou soul spare for his crying. I'm not talking about putting him in no time out. God didn't say that. Well, the law said I can't judge him. Oh, well, I'm sorry. If you do it in love and you do it in moderation. The Bible said in, 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 in Romans 13 chapter, it talks about the law. The law is made for the righteous and it's made for the wicked and unjust. If we do anything in moderation. Sure, some of you all, Lord God, and went too far and let them get grown. They putting their hands on you. And you let them do anything they want. Because you, Lord God, talking about Lord God, it's too late. It's, some of y'all, it's never too late. When we have Jesus, it's never too late. Lord God, when we got Jesus. But when we're going back to that Psalms 103rd chapter, he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And he said, all that within him. He said, and forget not all his benefits. When we bring our children to God, many of you all claim that you save. You don't even bring your children to church. You get up on Sunday mornings, you leave them at home in the bed. Or you leave them in your house watching TV. But you're running your mouth and you're talking about you singing Mason Gray. You running your mouth and you're talking about you saved. You running your mouth talking about you on the way to the kingdom of God. I'm here to tell you, you're out of your mind. I'm here to tell you, Lord God, you don't even know what love is. If you're not bringing your children, Lord, how are they going to learn about God? How are they going to understand the difference, Lord God, between right and wrong? It's through God. It's help is only through God. You can't help them. 
Death come in through the window. Death come in through the door. You can be sleeping in bed and death can come right into your home and take your child while you lay laying right there in the house. But Lord God, we don't think about that. We only believe that it only happened to other people. Bible says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And he said, all that within me. And he said, and forget not all his benefits who forgive you of all your sins. If we take our children and we bring them to Jesus, there are certain things and Jesus told his disciples when the disciples, he say, suffer not the little children to come unto me. Do you not think that children die? I know you under this false sense of security, false lie, this false pretense, talking about if your children die, Lord God, before a certain age, then the parents respond. That's a lie. That's a Lord God. That's a lie. Spin straight from the pit of hell. Bible says every man is responsible for their own salvation. That's a lie. You better quit believing that lie. Lord God, that's just all to it. People say, well, that's not true. I don't care what you say. You don't have no Bible for that. The Bible said in Ezekiel 18, chapter in the 23rd verse, he said, when a righteous man died in his sin, Bible say all the good that he shall done shall not be done. You can't, Lord God, take no sins of your child. My Lord, that's a lie. That's a Lord God. That's a web spin straight from the pit of hell. And Satan, Lord God, is laughing at you. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter in the 16, 15 verse. He said, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Sure, they silly. They ain't nothing but foolishness. They have no guidance. And if you ain't brought them up in God, where are they going to get their guidance for? The Bible says the, the, the devil has all power, signs and line wonder. He is the prince of the powers of the air. He look at all kinds of things on their cell phone. You let them watch all kinds of things on the TV. You don't know what they watching when you're not at home. Because you're not at home at all the time. But if you train them up in the weight of God. And Lord God, you, and you don't spare that rod. And you under, make them understand that you are the adult and they the child. And then you'll get some results. You'll get the results that you desire. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter in the 15th verse, foolishness. Look what the Bible says, bound in the heart of a child. He said, out of the heart, out of the heart come all the issues of life. Their heart is nothing but foolishness. They don't know any better. They're looking, Lord God, to us who are adults. They're looking to us who are parents. And Lord God, we wearing booty shorts. We wearing, Lord God, short uh, dresses all the way up to our yank. We wearing all these things with all our breasts all out, fake eyelashes, fake hair, fake this. What you think they're going to do? Tell me what you think they're going to do. They're going to emulate you. Because why? You're the adult. you my mama. If my mama cuss, my mama drink, my mama do this, my father run around, if some of them thought God fathers bring their sons around when they doing all this mess. You teaching them wrong. There's a day of reckoning when you're going to see your child in hell. There's a day of reckoning when you turn around and you see your child in hell, you're going to understand what I'm telling you. We have to train up our children. In the way. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't care if my child don't like me. They're going to, Lord, going to be brought up in God. And when they get out the house, I ain't got nothing to do with them. Well, they grown. But as long as you're under my roof, we're going to follow my rules. And the rules that we're going to follow is the word of God. What the Bible says, what Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. With a heavy laden, and he said, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We don't, Lord God, know anything if we don't have Jesus. Baby, you dead, your wife dead, your children dead, little Sally dead, little John dead. When you're looking, when you go in the house, when you, Lord God, if you got some time in your busy schedule, look at your child. You know your child ain't been baptized in the name of Jesus. God going to put them in hell if they die. But you can't help. He can lie and tell you God going to put him in heaven. He lying to you. He ain't got no Bible for it. Ask him for the word about it. Where that ain't in the Bible. If a child died, they go automatically go to heaven. That's a lie. Bible says flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
Do you not understand that? Proverbs 22nd chapter 15 verse. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the Bible says, but the rod of correction shall drive them out. Proverbs 23rd chapter in the, 20, in the 13th verse. He said, withhold not correction from the child. He said, for if thou beat him with the rod, thou shalt deliver his, his soul from, he shall not die. And it's one I want to make sure, and we all have experienced this one in the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter, in the 15th verse. He said, the rod of reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bring his mother to open shame. You ever went to a store and you see the child acting up? Or you went anywhere and you see the child just doing temper tantrums. Where do you think that began that? He didn't just start doing that. That child was doing that at home. The Bible says a child is known by their ways. He didn't just start doing that when he go out and about. Or she didn't just doing that when they go to the store. Baby, they've been doing that for a long time. That's their nature. That's who they are. They are trying to, Lord God, implore their will upon the parents. And the parents let them. Guess what's happening? The child is training the parents. The child is telling the parents, you're going to give me what I want, where I want it, or I'm going to act out. My Lord, my God. Something wrong with you. I'm here to tell you something wrong with you. My Lord, my God, Proverbs in the 3rd chapter and 11th verse. We have to understand that we have a responsibility to our children. Your child out there talking about going to a football game in the middle of the night, your little girl. Something wrong with you. God didn't ever mean for that to be. 